Sagittarius. This is your weekly tarot card reading from Born Without Boundaries Tarot. It is for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising Sign. I am going to describe to you energies. Please let them resonate wherever they resonate in your life. This is first and foremost your reading. Um, Sagittarius, there's always an extended reading, and I hope that you will join me for that. I will attach the links at the end of this video. I'll attach the link down below in the description box. I'll attach, I'll pin the, the link to the top of the uh, comment section. It'll be easy for you to find. Um, if you love this video, please share your love by giving it a big thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. In addition, ring that notification bell so that you know when I upload your favorite content. Um, and if you really love my content, I have a second YouTube channel called Astrology Motivation where I go live five days a week and you can talk to me live chat. I do a general tarot card reading and we sum up the energy, the astrology energy for that day as well. I hope you guys will find me there. I'm going to get into the astrology this week because it's a little bit complex and I got to tell you, it's not, it's not easy energy. Um, Jupiter, your ruling dignitary, is conjunct to Chiron, which it has been since last week. Um, and it's going to stay all week. And like I said, that can go one of two ways. It can be very good as in you are expanding from the way that you've suffered, which means you have learned. You've let it educate you, inspire you, and you're growing from it or you're helping others to grow um, because of how you've suffered and because of the things you know now. Um, or your pain and suffering and sorrow is growing and it's getting in the way of your progress. Conjunctions are neither good nor bad. It's just how you let them play out or how you use that combined energy. Some are easier than others because some energies meld more easily with others. And Jupiter and Chiron, it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. It's almost like Jupiter and Saturn. There's too much restriction with Chiron. There's too much seriousness. Jupiter is lighthearted, airy. It likes to just kind of float. Whereas Chiron is very serious and intense and um, punishment oriented, if you will. So this is tough. Um, it will be affecting, and I have this written down. Just give me, give me a second because I had to write it all down. Um, Sag twos. Oh, no, 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 no. Zero degrees Chiron growing from the pain or is the pain growing? That's all of you guys. Um, no, it is Sag. No, Sag twos, there's a trine to the Jupiter conjunct Chiron. So that's actually good news. What do I mean by Sag twos? So Sagittarius twos are those born between 10 degrees and 20 degrees. Uh, their natal sun is between 10 degrees and 20 degrees Sagittarius. So check that out and see where your natal sun is. It's you guys who your natal sun is going to be trying to this um, Jupiter Chiron conjunction and a trine is harmony. So you will definitely be getting an opportunity to heal and grow from the pain make harmony with the past and the way that you've suffered and you can expand and grow from it. Um, Sag one twos, so those of you born sort of between, uh, I think seven degrees and 12 degrees, uh, your, if your natal sun is between seven degrees and 12 degrees Sagittarius, you are in direct opposition to Mars which means getting things done might be a little difficult for you, especially when it comes to talking or speaking and taking action through word, um, written or spoken. Could be, you could be blindsided by some communications this week. Throughout this week, Jupiter is also going to be semi-square to the sun, which means you're not quite sure or you're having a hard time letting go of how you used to see yourself versus the self that you are now. Um, Cause the sun will represent the self. And with this, this sort of semi square, it's a little bit of a rub as in there's, there's, it's not horrible, um, but it could be arrogance creeping up that is keeping you from moving forward as much as you can. And arrogance is usually something that people use to cover up more tender feelings or feelings of vulnerability or 
in it being um, insufficient, right? Like um, low self-esteem or something like that. So ultimately those things could creep up for all of you guys this week as well. And for all of you, just remember that that Chiron Jupiter conjunction is really how are you gonna use the energy? Cause you will be confronted big time. You won't be able to escape it. You'll be confronted big time with the pain, with pain from the past. It will be ultimately your decision as to what to do with that, right? And you could use it as inspiration and an opportunity to grow. The best way to use chironic energy is to help somebody else grow or to help somebody else through the pain and therefore heal your suffering as you heal them. So that's just a little bit taken into consideration. Now, the cards that I have in front of me, I gotta tell you guys, this card has been popping up a lot lately. It's just been popping up a lot. And it worries me in a, in a concerned way because this means we're going through a lot of addiction. We're going through a lot of fear. And I think that that's the problem. Fear is cropping up and it's keeping people back. Maybe you're afraid of love or afraid to love again. And that is why you are hung up in some way or you're afraid to show your love. It doesn't have to be for your spouse. It doesn't have to be for somebody that you're dating. But this is a sense of could also be addictive love and that's why you're stuck in some way or you love something that is toxic for you. That is definitely that chironic energy bringing up those realities. And then we have the high priestess, temperance and Two of, two of swords, which means un, uncertain. You, you're trying to decide between two different things. You're trying to decide, it seems, because this is Sagittarius, right? This is your energy and this is the high priestess. What do you believe in? It's almost like a war of two faiths or um, what do they call that? when you when you just you just don't know what you believe in anymore um what you see as being right is there a god is there not so this is something that actually could have made you question a basic fundamental truth like something that made you wonder or tr you're trying to work two separate philosophies or ways of thinking you're trying to work it out now this could be within a relationship, trying to work out, you know, faith differences. It could also be just trying to work it out inside of yourself. You're trying to make peace with a conflict that you don't understand and that doesn't have any answers. It's kind of like accepting an apology that you were never given. You know, it's kind of like, how do I make peace with something that doesn't make any sense to me? And that's really bothering you. It's almost like I can't, and it's, it's making you start to question your faith. So be aware that you're kind of, you're having a conflict of faith now because something really just doesn't make any sense to you. Like, why, why did this happen? How could this happen? Like, is there a God if they could, if God could let bad things happen? Like those kind of questions creep up all the time. This seems to have hit home with you in a really tender place. Um, do, do, does this mean anything bad is happening? Let's dig into this devil energy. No, devil energy is about toxicity. It's about fear. So what is this fear? Fear to love again. Uh, we have, it, it's like answered the same question. We have Knight of Cups, Page of Wands, and Three of, it's almost like a love that was very new and pure and was really working out or something that you were really interested and cared a lot about that was new. And, and it's in some ways like you're stuck on it. You're stuck on the way that you expected things to go or expected things to be. I don't know why that would come out with the devil energy though, because it is like the page of wands, which always reminds me of you guys, like love for a child, love for love for, or like love for a child, love for you, you showing love, expressing love, 
or starting a new love or finding a new interest that really works for you, but there's been stagnation. So, but what is the devil there for? You're not answering my question, God. Who or what is this devil? Why is it on the table? Something took away, there was some sort of defeat or loss and loss of faith, defeat or loss of faith, something you put your whole heart into seemed to either be disinterested in you or wouldn't give you an answer. It was like this wonderful opportunity, but it wasn't, it was like a shadow opportunity. This is confusing. It's an opportunity that looked like it was going to happen and then it was swiped from you. I don't know what that is, it's coming up as like a shadow opportunity. Like it appeared, it was an illusion, illusionary opportunity. And you're starting to feel like, were you just messing with me? Was the universe just, just fooling around with me? Like, were you playing with me? It, it's, it's like a, almost a bitterness that's starting to grow and form and that could really it has caused something to slow down fear of loving again of opening your heart you don't know if you want to you're really not sure what to think about the situation you don't know if you can just give openly anymore and that is what's cutting into your faith so it's almost going to be a kind of a dark night of the soul things that are going to make you question your faith and maybe in some ways it's supposed to because you're not supposed to be who you used to be you're supposed to be who you were meant to be or who you are developing into and this is all part of the process and like i said with that semi square um you're not supposed to be who you used to be. You're not supposed to be what you were born or told or have been for this long. You're supposed to change. And I think you're going through a change. It's just not for good reasons. It's something that hurt very deeply and is starting to build a toxicity. So how does Sagittarius deal with this? Because this is not this is not usual energy for you. So how does Sagittarius go about dealing with this? Uh, Nine of Wands, what you're doing currently came out right in front of us is you're being defensive or you're protecting yourself or you're deciding to not be open to different opportunities, to, to not explore them, to not take chances. It's interesting because you do usually like to try to take mm, chances like, Hold on. Okay, so but what are they what are they supposed to do? You don't know which way. Um, five of Pentacles is here, which means it's like you're all out of something. You're drained of something. This could even be financial problems or being defensive. It's almost like how could this get any worse? Or you're trying to protect yourself from ending up on the street or from losing any more. And that's why you're being extra defensive. You don't want to end up with nothing again or you don't want to end up with nothing this time and you can kind of feel it there's a fear that's building there um but what are they con confused about what's this question here in the future you don't know about your future queen of swords is here this could be a counselor or getting help or somebody who will help you make up your mind and lead you forward you're not really sure if you trust that or you're not really sure you trust you can trust some advice that somebody gave you can they or can't they knight of pentacles this is about a job maybe a job you that will offer financial stability um but i don't think you know whether you, you don't want it you don't want it you do already know you already have made a decision but you're kind of scared if i don't am i risking some sort of certainty or security queen of pentacles is here this could be a managerial position managing money working with money or some sort of pay raise or being in charge of multiple people this is usually um somebody who's really responsible um I just don't know if you still see yourself that way or see yourself staying 
where you've been, I just think you're scared to admit it and say, yeah, I don't, I don't want this. This doesn't work for me anymore. Hold on, be bold and make the first move. So maybe you're worried you won't get a position or there's like something impending that you're worried about your job or your relationship. Uh, what do you need to release? Be bold and make the first move. What do you need to release? What do they need to release? Why are you asking a question with a question? It says, be bold and make the first move. That's telling me that Sagittarius, before this gets worse and before this fear builds to a point where it will paralyze you, you have to take action this week and start the ball rolling. And that will also be you confronting your trauma and facing your fears. And that will lead to helping you heal yourself. What do you need to release? You need to release that fear. See, thank you, God. It, he just keeps believing in me. Um, it, it answered its own question. What do you need to release? You need to release that fear. And no matter what, it is not about success or failure. It is about you facing your fears. And that is why you're going to be bold and make that move. Whatever it is. If it's an old love affair that hurt you, you're gonna get out there and you're gonna date. You're gonna go on a date this week. That's what you're gonna do even if you don't feel like it for one reason, to get that movement going and confront the fear. Because if you don't, it's going to get worse. So you must confront that fear this week. If you're worried about losing your job, then get out there and interview for something this week. Put your application in, put 100 applications in this week. You can feel it and it's gonna get worse if you don't confront it now. But if you act now, there is a release and a healing that will come from it. And I think that's a very important. And then we have, after we've discussed this, right? Yes, there is a golden opportunity out there for you. Yes, this is actually a beautiful thing, something you can rely on and have faith in. It will be tangible, not just subjective or spiritual. It will be tangible. There are tangible results that happen once you decide to face your fears. Tangible results. It will go a long way. And maybe in a way right now, those results are hidden. And they're supposed to be, that would be intentional. This is Major Arcana, right? This is the moon card. It's intentionally hidden, Sagittarius, because it's not about you getting the opportunity. It's about you getting the courage to face what you're scared of. And without that, you haven't really learned the lesson to move on. And this is all that chironic energy right it's, it's all that energy i don't know if you yeah it's all that chironic energy about you gotta earn it <laughs> you gotta earn it you gotta prove it and you can only do that by facing your sadness by facing what made you suffer by facing what caused you pain king of cups cancer scorpio pisces you got one of these guys in your life this would be an older dude or this is just about emotional stability that could be on its way you could find a way to feel better about yourself better about the situation more in control of who you are and you'll realize self-esteem on the other side of all of this holy crap this is heavy and you guys usually aren't heavy but that's the jupiter conjunct chiron please expect that this week and for the next, I think, couple of weeks, maybe not a couple of weeks, I'll check. I haven't checked the charts to see how long it lasts. But the heaviness that you've been feeling all last week and through this week is because of the, your, Jupiter is absorbing that heaviness of Chiron. Um, we have four of wands that came out in reverse. This could be divorce or breakup or split up or leaving a job. So that's what's in your future. It's coming out in your future, just so that you know, you do have a breakup that is coming. This does not have to be romantic, but you can, you can bet if you were afraid of losing your job, there's a layoff coming. Not right now, but not too far from now. You're not, it's not gonna be in the, another year. So you have got to be proactive. It's, it's almost like God's giving you the answer. Trust yourself, be confident in what you're feeling because you're right. Now, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen, right? It, it, there's going to be a, a breakup whether you leave or, or they force you to leave. 
is up to you and it's saying be bold and make the first move because there are actually people out there that will really love your work and offer you a lot from what you do and you'll get a lot more money especially this is about career you're gonna get a lot more money now if you're proactive than if you wait and you're desperate like just just from basic like hiring like like you know applying for jobs and stuff everybody kind of knows that it's like you apply when you already have a job and that makes you way more desirable than if you're because then if you're desperately seeking because then you're scared then you're worried and you will take something that will be beneath you you will take it just to hold like hold on to something you don't want to put yourself in that position so i'm telling you impending doom needs to motivate you this week because it's your what i tell you it's your choice were you going to act on it? are you going to be proactive or are you going to let it go because if you let it go not only are you going to you're going to miss up not only is it going to be worse for you you're going to miss out on this great opportunity that's actually wanting you to look at it and come to it so there you go find your confidence find your self-esteem it's like you did have confidence or self-esteem but all of this is conflicting let's Let's get further into this. We're going to go to the extended, guys. I will see you there.